maize walls. Um, obviously, we've just been hearing about uh, how we should be able to, or it would be good to uh, reduce the cost of building a maze. And it's it's absolutely correct that it's always been a major problem um, creating walls. Um, so I thought I'd just go through uh, how we built a test half-size test maze. Um, it's not necessarily the best way to do it, but it's uh, it's how we did it. And uh, as we're complete cheapskates, it didn't really cost a lot. Um, okay, so maze walls over, over the over the years, a lot a lot of different mazes have been used. Um, you know, for, for homemade bits and pieces. Starting in uh, uh, the very first competition, I'm not completely sure how this maze was was uh, built, but it looks very much like it was uh, pretty fixed. There's a, there's a lot of, um, there's no obvious posts in there and there's, uh, there's, there's gaps in the wall at, at very odd places where posts wouldn't be. So I, I would assume that this maze was fixed. Um, this is obviously going to be, uh, in the end, for a, for a competition that, that requires uh, different mazes to be revealed, um, the most expensive way of doing things because you have to build the whole thing um, over and over again. Uh, I can only assume that they didn't expect that 40 years later people would still be running around these mazes. Okay, in, the, in 1980, the first UK um, mouse uh, competition um, was run on a, on a maze which didn't have any posts. Um, posts came came later on. Um, it used uh, three different sized um, walls, um, and it and it had uh, had holes drilled in the maze, which were around about a centimeter to two centimeters away from the wall. So it had the disadvantage that you had lots of uh, holes in the actual base. Um, and also, I'm not really sure that, that these things are uh, particularly school friendly. Um, quite good for uh, for fending off muggers and things on your way home, though. So back when uh, mice were real mice and uh, dinosaurs like this thing used to roam around the maze and could easily squash the maze, you probably did need a, a very solid maze. A lot of mice used sensors that dragged on the wall. Um, and therefore would, would um, knock over walls if they weren't, um, you know, very, very well bolted down. Um, this uh, picture on the left is our very first practice maze. And at that point, our mouse looked down on the top of the walls. So you can see it just comprises of posts and the tops of walls. There's no, there's, there's no middle to it. Uh, this is the only picture I could find. It's probably the only picture that exists of uh, this. So th this would have been about 1984. Um, I can see that that board at the back is uh, is the pegboard that was on, on the wall in my bedroom at my parents' house. So, uh, yeah, that was a while ago. Uh, in 1985, I believe, it may have, they may have sent it across in 1984, but it was for the 1985 World um, competition in Japan. Japan sent out all over the world several identical mazes so that everybody could uh, have exactly the same maze when they got to Japan for the uh, for the world competition. Um, this was the first maze uh, that we actually uh, competed on that had posts, and I think it's where the, the maze that has been copied ever since. Um, it used uh, wooden wooden posts with very, very thin slots in and a thin piece of aluminium in the end of the, uh, the wood, which, which meant that unlike a lot of the plastic ones today, the indent in the posts was a lot less than, uh, than you get currently. The half-size competition was uh, introduced first in Japan, again with, uh, with, with the same construction of, uh, may, of the maze, um, this time I believe in plastic. Uh, but with posts um, connected to the thing. The, the, the important thing really is that it looks like the original competition. And in fact, if you see a, a half-size mouse in the, uh, in the maze, 
um, without any reference, it can be quite difficult to tell whether it's a half size or a full size maze. Okay, why would we want to have posts? Um, posts mean that all the walls are the same size. That helps when picking up a pile of posts. Um, the only issue you should get really with the, the three size system is that it doesn't matter which wall you pick up, it's always the wrong one. So they, they're easy to do. And fast and heavy mice, it, they, they can be quite strong. If a, if a mouse goes into the wall, they, they tend to come off the worst for it, as uh, I'm sure Pete will agree. Right, removing the, uh, removing the posts and uh, putting magnets on the, on the walls, which is what we did uh, to create our half-size mace, has a number of uh, advantages over posts. Uh, first of all, the plastic posts tend to snap. Um, this pile of posts here is, a, is, a, is our current pile of uh, broken uh, posts from our full-size maze, and you tend to lose several posts on every outing, generally. The manufacture of the actual walls is a lot simpler because you don't have to put any shape on the end of the walls or lugs. They're just square pieces of uh, wood, plastic, or, any, or 3D printing, or whatever else that you, uh, that you try to... Uh, create them with, which makes them a lot simpler. The only thing they need is uh, a small hole in the bottom um, to place a magnet. Uh, mazes are quick to set up because you don't have to put out all the posts. You don't have the problem of trying to push walls in between posts where they don't quite fit. They, they just sit on the, uh, on the main base. Uh, it's even easier to put the maze away because you could just get a giant broom and literally sweep the uh, sweep them off the, the thing into a into a big bag, and and you're done. There's there's no no post to pull out, no post to break. Um, okay, and also because the uh, because the base is flat and the posts are in the same place except every second place, it's possible to make a load of uh, full size maze walls in the same way and use the same base. So that you can uh, you can have a full size and half size maze, um, just just on the same base, uh, which hopefully would would help uh, make it easier to to have both. Okay, so these are the uh, that we made our walls out of UPVC um, trim, which. Uh, which is, is very, which is basically UPVC covered foam. Um, it's it's very tough, and it's uh, you you can buy it, and it's it's very very cheap. It's about uh, maybe three pounds for four or five meter strips of this stuff. Um, I used this funny little table saw uh, that Jim got me for my birthday a couple of years ago. It's a really simple thing. It's just a, a radio control motor with big blade but it's, it's extremely good for cutting this this type of foam you can just cut it to straight size and, and that's about it to put the magnets in the end you can use a just a drill bit with a, a handle with a hand handle on and a couple of turns of the drill will put a, a perfect hole in the bottom to to allow you to insert a magnet what we found is that where the north and south of the magnet is important. Mag uh, if you're just using a, a wooden, if you're using a wooden base, um, as we did with basically nails uh, put in where the posts uh, would normally be, um, you need you need. It doesn't matter which way round they are, though. We probably should uh, create a standard. Um, so, in any end on, on the walls, you've got three walls. One wall. The normal, which is the length of a single wall with one post on the end, that's that's used for almost the entire maze. You also need a long wall, which is a wall with two post lengths on the end. Um, that's required just for the to finish off the ends of um, single pieces that are in the maze. Um, to make sure that there's a post in the correct place. And the small ones, which are 
walls that don't have any posts on at all aren't actually required to make any particular maze. They're, they're just useful for being able to put in the middle of a, a corridor to, uh, to block it off, um, whereas otherwise you'd have to take out uh, a normal size one and replace it with a long one. So a few, a few short ones um, is also useful. Yeah, the north, north and south. So on, on a post, we have a, a north-facing magnet or a north-facing magnet that, that points down. The reason for that is that any wall that has a non-post the uh, if if the north is also point, pointing down, you can't put it next to that one, or the, the thing flies away. But if you have south at the other end, that wall, that magnet, meaning that they that they all uh, jump into place. And in fact, it's possible to almost throw them into place if you get the, the wall anywhere near where it's supposed to be. It flies to the the correct position, um, which is quite interesting. W one thing we found quite difficult was actually to work out which was the north pole of the magnet. Short of actually, uh, you know, sticking it on a piece of cork in a saucer of water, um, we found that you can get um, apps on your phone, if your phone's got a magnetometer in it, which will tell you that, that you've got the north side or the south side of the, of the magnet poking towards, poking towards you. The base, um, a bit like uh, Duncan's one, we used a, a template. This template was uh, printed out on an A3 piece of paper. We have an A3 printer, but you could use an A4 one. Obviously, the bigger you can make it, the more accurate it is. Um, we just put the paper paper down, drilled a very small hole. The, the, the magnets used are, are only uh, three millimetres thick, so you just drill a small hole that they can just dip down into um, at each of the points where the, where the posts would be. Okay, and then we actually used uh, a bag of nails, uh, which I think cost about 75p, and we've still got about 90% of them left. Um, the, the important thing is that the head of the nail is as at, as close to the size of the magnets that you've used uh, as possible. If you if you use a nail with a, with a smaller head or a bigger head, it means that the, the walls can snap into place in a different, um, you know, slightly off. So if you can get nails that have, um, in this case, we used four millimeter magnets with a four millimeter head on the nails, the, the walls always snap exactly to the right place. What's next? That's a bit of video. Just to the walls, yeah, throw them in. Yeah, and they, they just snap to to where they're supposed to go. Okay, things we might do differently. As shown earlier, uh, if a, a mouse hits this, uh, hits the walls, or at least a mouse the size of Thumper, uh, which of course is, uh, is considerable for a half-sized maze, it just runs over and knocks them over. Um, so if you've got a bit more money and you want to spend a bit more on magnets, you could put the same magnets at the top as well as the bottom, and that that makes the maze, the maze blocks um, stick much more firmly. Uh, the other thing you could use is something with a bit more uh, magnetic pull, such as some steel, uh, you know, four millimetre steel um, pins rather than... Uh, rather than nails. Uh, but also, of course, you have to make sure that these things are magnetic because not all nails, especially stainless steel ones, and not all um, pins that you might get or, or uh, you know, steel rod that's four millimetres thick, uh, it's very difficult to, to find out how magnetic it is before you buy it. <laughs> but I'm sure we can, uh, we can find um, some of that. I think that's about it. Any questions? So how thick is the baseboard? Uh, the, the baseboard was just any old bit that we had lying around in the garage. So it looks like it's about three quarters of an inch, maybe. Yeah, so you have, yeah, you have to use nails that are shorter than the thickness of the baseboard, I presume? Yes, you, yes you do, yeah. 
Yes, yeah, otherwise um, it gets a bit dangerous with it sticking up. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you having to cut them all, though, which would be a real pain. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you can get the, the ones we've got, I've got, um, they, they've, for, for the size of the nail, they've got a very big head, so they're, they're, they're more like tacks um, that, that we found work fine. Okay, but the, the, we've built a nine by nine, uh, and it took us uh, yeah, a, a day to create that. The base took about um, half an hour, so you know, just zip up. Um, but they, they do they do all um, fit extremely well. Uh, one thing to remember is always to make the maze blocks ever so slightly shorter than they should be, because if you make them slightly longer, you end up at the other end of the maze with walls that are too long. But uh, yeah, you know, it's it. As a as a home maze, it's really good, and you can. Some of our maze walls are three D printed. Um, others are, are using that uh, that UPVC. Uh, I suppose the only other improvement that UPVC is only covered on one side because it's cladding, basically. Um, but we haven't painted the other side. It's white ish. <laughs> it's just sort of slightly yellowy, um, but it doesn't seem to affect the mouse that we're running out at the moment too much anyway. Yeah, but that might not be acceptable for a competition. Oh, absolutely. No, in a competition, you would have to, you'd have to paint the walls. Um, okay. I think. We also used a, uh, uh, an ink pad, a red ink pad, just to go across the top. That's the, you know, the sort that you, you'd use stamps in. Um, so we found that really easy just to go across the top to make it red. Top starting to be red, but I think it looks better. Okay. Any other questions for, for Derek? Okay. Did, no, you, print, Rob, did Rob. you publish it? Oh, sorry, carry on. No, Rob, I was just saying, yeah, carry on. I, I was just going to say, Derek, could you publish, uh, I don't know, some sort of spec of the parts you've used? So the magnets, the walls, and the tacks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be good. I just wanted to um, say that my local, one of my local DIY places, not B and Q, mm -hmm. the other one, um, uh, actually in the strip wood section, they actually have some plain finished pine that's twenty five millimeters by six millimeters. Perfect. And you just cut yeah. it off. Cut and it up. Go. Uh, and unpainted, it has reflectivity, which is very very similar to what I get when I put. Um, my white PVC finish on it, which surprised me, but there you go. Right. It may change with time. Is it is it fair to say that the magnetic encoders at any of your entries are not affected by the magnets? Yes, that, that was, I've actually got a note of that and I managed to miss it off, which was that sense, one of the disadvantages, sensors possibly could be affected. Um, but no, the, the magnetic encoders, generally the magnetic encoders are in the middle of the mouse um, or at least behind the wheels. So I think they're far enough away. Uh, we've had no no trouble. The And the the mouse, the uh, I don't know if you've seen our um, bumper um, reconstruction mouse, uh, but that uses magnetic uh, encoders on the wheels and those wheels are right next to the wall and it has we have no problem at all but it, but it, it is possible i suppose that sensitive ones could could be affected by the magnets or you could use the magnets to work out where the edge of the uh where the edge of the walls were <laughs> <laughs> another competition <laughs> okay Derek, thanks very much for that that's, that's uh that's that's quite interesting that there might be some mileage in that um getting rid of posts and uh, things that can be swept away easily, definitely attractive. 